All right, good morning. Uh, please bow your heads with me as we pray and uh, open up this time uh, to worship our God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love and for your faithfulness. Uh, we, we come before you, Lord, uh, with humble hearts, and Lord, we prepare uh, this time, Lord, to just give you all the praise and to give you all the glory, Lord, that you deserve. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your salvation for us. And Lord, we come before you now to, yeah, just to offer up uh, all of our praise to you as our God. Uh, we, we pray this in our precious and our precious Lord uh, in your Son's name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's stand. Let's uh, praise God for the love that He's shown us. By the cross you came and broke them down, you broke them down. There were chains around us, by your grace we are no longer bound, no longer bound. You called me out of the grave, you called me into the light, you called my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the darkness shaking, feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to life. I'm back to life. Hear the song awaken. All creation singing, we're alive. Cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. There is no other 
so sure and steady my hope is held in your hand when castles crumble and breath is fleeting upon this rock i will stand upon this rock i will stand Glory, glory, we have no other King but Jesus, Lord of all. We raise the anthem, our loudest praises ring, we crown Him Lord of all. kindly rule has shattered and broken the curse of sin's tyranny my life is hidden neath heaven's shadow your crimson flood covers me your crimson flood covers me glory glory we have no other king but jesus lord of all we read the anthem our loudest praises ring we crown him lord is better make my heart believe in every victory Jesus is better make my heart believe than any comfort Jesus is better Make my heart believe More than all riches Jesus is better Make my heart believe And our souls declaring Jesus is better Make my heart song eternal Jesus is better make my heart believe glory glory we have no other king but Jesus Lord of all glory glory Jesus, Lord of all, we raise the anthem, our loudest praises ring, we crown him Lord of all, glory, glory, and glory, glory, we have no other king but Jesus, Lord of all.
see him there the great I am a crown of thorns upon his head the father's heart displayed for us oh God we thank you for the cross Lifted up on Calvary's hill, we cursed your name, and even still, you bore our shame and paid the cost. Oh God, we thank you for the cross. Behold the Lamb, the story of redemption written on His hands. Jesus, You will reign forevermore. The victory is Yours. We sing Your praise, endless hallelujahs to Your holy name. Jesus, you will reign forevermore. The victory is yours. Offer up this sacrifice for every sin. Our Savior died, the Lord of life can't be contained our God has risen from the grave oh our God has risen from the grave oh behold the Lamb the story of redemption written on his hands Jesus you will yours. We sing your praise, endless hallelujahs to your holy name. Jesus, you will reign forevermore. The victory is yours. When the age of death is done, We'll see your face bright as the sun. We'll bow before the King of Kings. Oh God, forever we will sing. Behold the Lamb, the story redemption written on his hands Jesus you will reign forevermore the victory is yours oh behold behold the lamb the story of redemption written on his hands Jesus you will reign forevermore the victory is yours. We sing your praise, endless hallelujahs to your holy name. Jesus, you will reign forevermore. The victory is yours. You reign forevermore. The victory is yours, King Jesus, reigns forever. Is yours. Yes, Lord, the victory is yours now and forever. Thank you for winning that victory for us. 
that we can be brought from from death, the, the depths of our sin, into eternal glory with you. Praise you, Jesus. We lift you high. May you be glorified the rest of our time here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. God is doing great things in our midst. Sometimes uh, I can't help it, but uh, we feel like it's on Sunday morning. That's when the action happens. Um, and we think that maybe God is on the break Monday through Saturday. He only is uh, doing things on Sunday, but that couldn't be further from the truth because our God is doing great things uh, in our midst and want to do great things in our midst. I hope that is your conviction, that you truly believe that. We are thankful that God has raised uh, people in our midst, brothers and sisters, to do His will, not just within us, but also sending them into uh, doing great things uh, for, the, for the gospel, for the kingdom. Next week, uh, our brother James and our sister Won Hee will be leaving for uh, a one-year ministry in, in Korea, South Korea, and we want to just uh, get a uh, brief overview and we'll be praying for them. So I'd like to ask James and Won Hee, would you come up here, please? And as they come up, um, they'll be leaving, and, uh, but we, we're going to miss them because they have been such a blessing to us. And we're going to ask them to just briefly share with us what, uh, what God has called them to do, and then we'll be praying for them. James. Good morning. Uh, as many of you know that... Um, I'm sorry. Good morning. As many of you know that uh, for the past three years, we've been reaching out to the Muslim Arabs in Al Cajon, and before that, we spent uh, more than 25 years uh, uh, doing ministry in the Middle East. So recently, uh, God has uh, opened door um, for us to go to Korea and also to reach out to the Muslims, uh, uh, people in Korea. So tomorrow, uh, we'll be going um, to Korea, and, uh, and we plan to stay there for one year. And um, so our purpose is uh, we will work with Korean Christians uh, to reach out to the uh, Afghan refugees that has recently uh, moved uh, to Korea, and as well as um, to, uh, to work with Korean Christians uh, to reach out to the Muslim foreign workers uh, like, for example, from Pakistan, from Indonesia, and other countries that are living and working uh, in Korea. And so we'd like to ask for your prayer. That first of the prayers that um, tomorrow we will have a safe trip uh, to go to uh, Korea. And also a prayer that we can have a good relationship with uh, our future um, Korean uh, Christian partners. And that God will... Um, well, open door for us uh, to, you know, to, to reach out to the Muslims in Korea. And also, uh, please pray that we can be able to train um, Korean Christians how to reach out uh, to, to the Muslims. And actually, that was kind of the, the call, was that when we were in Korea last year, we met several Korean Christians who said, hey, please come and show us uh, how to reach out to the Muslims. So we'll be doing also training um, you know, for the Korean Christians. So thank you so much for praying for us, and we hope to see you uh, next year. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Let us uh, pray for James and Won Hee as they embark on an exciting uh, ministry that God has called them to do. Let's pray, shall we? Our gracious, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for our beloved brother jo James and also sister Won Hee. Lord, you have, first of all, we thank you that you have saved them. Lord, uh, we rejoice that they know you and that they love you and they're ready to do your will. That is the greatest joy uh, we can, anyone and all of us can have, oh God, is the assurance uh, of our salvation and knowing that we are in the center of your will. We ask, oh God, that you would guide their feet, Lord, into your way. We ask, oh God, that uh, you would strengthen their commitment and their dedication to you we ask, O oh God, that you would uh, continue to provide for them as you have been faithful to them through those years of, of faithful ministry, Lord, and as they embark on this exciting uh, next chapter in Korea, that, Lord, you would continue to do so. Father, you are our rock. You are our deliverer in whom we trust. 
indeed you are worthy to be praised in the life of James and Wan He. We pray, O oh God, that you would fill them with the knowledge of your will, with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Grant them, O oh God, a continued hunger and thirst after you, because as they do so, Lord, you can use them mightily and greatly. Bless them physically, bless them spiritually, bless them emotionally in, in, in every aspect of their ministry, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, you would watch over their children and their family, even as they leave. Pray that, uh, assure them, Lord, of your continued grace uh, as they faithfully serve you. You will do so in watching over their uh, loved ones as they do so. We pray that you would grant them favor, as uh, James mentioned, to those that they'll be working with. Lord, grant them open door of witness and equipping uh, those that they will be training so that uh, your kingdom, your gospel will be shared to especially the Muslims in Korea and that, Lord, they would come to faith. Lord, we look forward to hearing uh, great news of what you're doing and uh, we will continue to pray for them, Lord, even as they uh, embark on this exciting uh, ministry tomorrow. So, Lord, we lift them up to you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to miss Wonhee and James and Wonhee because they, when they came back from their ministry, the first thing that came to their mind was, how can we help uh, the brothers and sisters in our midst? And, and sure enough, they are involved in practically every facet of our church ministry, James teaching Sunday school, um, they work uh, in Wonhee and ERT, so there'll be a void that we will fill. So we pray that uh, God would raise up uh, in our midst, uh, those that will continue their faithfulness and their love for God's people. Would you turn your Bibles with me uh, to the book of Revelation as we continue our study in the last book of the Bible? And we're going to look at Revelation chapter 4. Um, we've been in Revelation since the beginning of this year, and we'll be there for a while, uh, though we'll have breaks here and there. Would you turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 4, and after you turn there, would you stand and as we read God's Word together, as we read, as, I, as you listen, as I read God's Word and you follow along. Revelation chapter 4, reading from verses 1 to 11. After this, I look, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and a voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here. And I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also, in front of the thro throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to Him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and they say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory 
and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, would you bless your word to our lives. Grant us, Lord, a greater vision of you in our life that we may worship you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever been to the White House? I've never been there, though our family is planning a Washington, D.C. trip this summer. And I, I already wrote our senator to ask if we could help uh, get tickets so that we could go to the White House. And I, you know, I'm, I'm a history buff, and I'm just so thrilled, excited to see the sight and sound uh, or what's there in Washington, D.C., particularly the White House. You know, I've never been there, but I've, the closest I got was when I visited the Reagan Presidential Library up in Simi Valley, California, and they have a replica of the Oval Office, the office of the president in the White House when he was there, Reagan, when Reagan, President Ronald Reagan was uh, still there. And we were able to look around and see how it was, the center of the office of the president where he works, where he makes major decision that affects not just our country, but the whole world. Think about it. And it's just fascinating to see what are the things that surround the president. Let me, if you've never been uh, either to the White House, the, the actual one, or never been to the replica in the Reagan Presidential Library, let me just give you a little bit of a, a tour, a, ver, a, a, a description tour of what what that, that Oval Office is at that time. You see, President Reagan surrounded himself with many things from the western part of the United States, where he's from. He's from California. Around the, the, the room, the Oval Office, he has various sculptures of cowboys and of western animals. He wants to be remembered, uh, he wants to be reminded of them. Uh, among his collection were miniature bronze saddles, along with different artwork, uh, such as a painting depicting the Union soldiers, and then another painting, that of President George Washington. Behind his desk, as you could see, lined many photographs of his family. I'm sure a constant reminder of the, his loved ones. But there, were, there are two particular photographs that are not his family, they are of President Eisenhower. For some reason, that, that's very special to him. On his desk where he worked, he rested um, uh, the Kennedy Eagle paperwe paperweight that he used, along with two plaques, two kind of a, 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 a words that may serve as a reminder or encourage Reagan each time he sat down two plaques. The first one has these words written on it. It can be done. That's a good one. It can be done, says one plaque. The other plaque says these words. There's no limit to what a man can do or where he can go if he doesn't mind who gets the credit. I, I like that. That's a good one. It doesn't matter, uh, no, there's no limit to what you can do, where you can go, if you don't mind who gets the credit. It's good to know that our president, well, President Reagan at the time feels that way. And also, not to forget, on the table, uh, on his desk that he worked in daily, uh, on a daily basis, sat a jar of jelly, bean, jelly be bellies. You know, je je I think jelly beans, basically what it is, which is President Reagan's favorite trip, treat that is. What an incredible thing. I, I, I could go on to say, I wonder why he had those things there. But I think it's, it's, it's no need to mention that these are things that are important. There are things that kind of help our president as he makes important decision, as I've said, that affected not just us here in the country, but around the world. I wonder what what are, what, what's God's throne look like? What is it like to be in the presence of God, in the, in the center of heaven, so to speak? 
Well, we don't need to wonder anymore because in the book of Revelation, we are granted a tour of the throne room of God. You know, I'm sure many of us could just imagine, but here in Revelation 4, we are given a vision of what God, the, what, what it means to be in the very presence of God and what are the things around it. Let me just warn you that, that as unlike my description of the White House, um, you know, or the Oval Office, you know, this, you could try to, you know, verbalize, describe it in ways that we can understand. But I can imagine that words will be difficult to get to describe what the presence of God will be like. So we may attempt to do that, but it, it's just like a, 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 a very, um, how would I say it, where, you know, weak effort, because it's much grander. Much spectacular, that's the word. In fact, I, I, I always remind uh, myself as I read the book of Revelation that as you enter into this part, it is meant to be experienced or, or imagine the sight, the sound, and how it may feel, so to speak, as it is to understand. So that's just something to bear in mind as we go through from here on, Revelation for all the way until 22, chapter 22. So what is, what's the throne room of God look like? Let's get a tour, shall we, together. Would you op uh, could follow along with me in Revelation chapter 4? Before we jump in, just a reminder that we are um, going through the book of Revelation together. This will take us a while, but that's okay. The theme, I believe, of Revelation is not about this or that, about end times necessarily, though they are discussed there. It's really about one thing. It's about our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. If we go through this and you know many, many things, but you don't know Jesus, you miss the point, right? It's about Jesus. You know, I, 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 I mentioned this before. Many people uh, that I know of, they study revelation. They want to know about the Antichrist. He will be one character there. He, they come out of revelation knowing more about the Antichrist. When I and then I ask, what did you learn about Christ? Uh, I'm not sure. So that they got it all wrong. It's the revelation of Jesus, and not just the revelation of Jesus, but wanting Jesus into our into our life. So I entitled our study, "Come, Lord Jesus." I pray that as you study, as we study Revelation, you would know more about the Lord, and you want the Lord in your life, and you can't wait to be with him. Either the, the, our Lord Jesus calls us home first, or well, he will come to get us. Either way, it doesn't matter. We want Jesus in our life. That's the goal of our study of Revelation. So, John, and for the first three chapters that we have been, we've been working through for what, the, next, the past three months, we are hearing what the Lord has to say to the church. His message to us believers, from chapter 4 on towards the end of 22, Jesus is now speaking not just to the church, but to the whole world. His message to everyone. And it begins with a, a glimpse of heaven where the message will come. What does heaven look like? Let's take a look. We're given a tour uh, where we're told in chapter 4, Verse, um, verse 1, it begins with the word, after this, John said, I look, and before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I first heard from chapter 1 said, come up here, I will show you what must soon take place. Here we go, everybody. A door has been opened, come right in, says the Lord to John, enter in to see what is there in heaven. And John said, suddenly in spirit, he entered into, uh, in, into the very presence of God. And verse 2 tells us that the first thing that captures his, his sight is a throne. It's a throne. It's, it's, think of it as, as the seat of power. That's what we think of. The last vision or picture of a throne we have was when King Charles 
was, uh, was crowned, didn't he, in Westminster Abbey. And we, I don't know if you remember or if you know, uh, there was King Edward's chair, the chair upon which the king would sit that, will, that signifies that he is the king. And that's, that's I, I, apparently what John has, has seen there. I saw a throne, and as, as wonderful, as fascinating as it was, I'm so glad he said what he would say after that. And he saw someone seated on it. As wonderful as the sight of a throne is, it's even better to know that someone is on the throne. I hope you feel the same as I am. I, I'm thrilled with that. Someone's on the throne, and someone is in control. That person, obviously, is God, and God is on the throne. Aren't you encouraged by that? Is that good news to you? I mean, if we saw a throne, it's, it's empty. I mean, first, it'll be, it's fascinating, but it will turn to what? <gasps> it should, I, I hope it would cause you, you know, a shocker. Uh, it's like a, the plane, the cockpit of a plane. You, you got a tour of the cockpit of a plane, and then, oh, there's the seats of the plane. No one's on it. Who's flying the plane? Okay, maybe it's on autopilot, yes. But uh, all the way? You know, well, right now with all the automation, that we might, we're bent toward that. But wouldn't it be a relief, wouldn't it be an encouragement to know that someone is in control and that we are not to fend for ourselves. He will guide and lead us. That's exactly what John has shown. I'm sure he must, now he didn't say it this way, but, but I'm sure if I were John, I'd say, I saw a throne, someone's on it. Phew, I'm glad that's the case. That's, that's how, uh, and, and it, this will bear out as we look at the rest of, and in fact, for next week, when you come back next week, we're going to see the person on the throne in, in action, so to speak. But let's, let's keep it at that. Remember, we're on a tour here. We're just getting what's, what's around the throne, so to speak. John went on to describe the throne, what's, it, the, the, the things that are on the throne. Look at verse 3 with me. He said, the one who sat on the throne had an appearance of jasper and ruby. Now, I don't know about you. I'm not into gems, though. Um, I remember going to the Museum of, of uh, um, Natural History. They have a section on different types of gem. And one thing that I, 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 I can say is it's just spectacular. The color is just it's just amazing to see what they are. But I didn't go into the detail, but I just know it is incredibly colorful. And that's the case with, with the use of gems since the beginning of time. We're told that there are two particular gems that are in, that is significant in the throne of God. First of all, it's jasper. Jasper is a type of gem or rock, you know, that is, has, mo has different type of coloration to it. You know, it could be red, yellow, brown, depending on the, the type of, um, you know, kind of a, a thing that it, it has. It is also described also as clear at times. Uh, in fact, some people feel that, that what is called jasper in the Bible could be diamond, okay? It has different hues, so to speak, and one of which, especially the, at the end of Revelation, it is described clear as crystal. So it could be a diamond, as some speculated. Um, and then you have uh, ruby. We all know what ruby is. It's color red. So I think it's precious gem. And then if you study the Old Testament, you know, when the high priest wear his vestment, you know, he has a breastplate of different type of gems. The first one is the jasper rock. The last one is the ruby. It's the big... It, and it signifies God's people. And those two, the first and the last gem, will be found, you know, in the throne of God, you know. And, and you say, well, that's, that's for us, gems are very precious. It could convey preciousness. But I think there's more to it. You see, when light is shown, I mean, in the, in, when we turn off the light of, uh, and, and I give you a piece of gem in a rock, you would not know the difference, would you? right? It's just a piece of rock. But when you turn the light on, when you shine the light on it, ah, that's when, that's when the gem 
bears out. It's the reflection of light, the beauty, the brilliance, the spectacular thing of, of light shining, reflected out, that, that bears out its significance. I believe that's what we see here. Another way to put it, John saw the throne and the light, the jasper and the ruby, flashes out, reflects out just brilliance that is so, you know, for, for us, it just draws us to it. The unapproachable brightness and glory that surrounds God himself. It must have been spectacular to see. And that's the case. So you have red, you have different hues of color, but wait. Verse 3, John goes on to say, there's a rainbow that shone like emerald that encircles the throne. Emerald is what? It's green. So you have red, you have green, you have the diamond flashing all around. That's, that, that's a description of the throne of God, so to speak, what is on the throne. And all of that, that spectrum of light flashes out, you know, with brilliance and color. Now, the word rainbow should come to us, should not be a surprise to us. We've seen the rainbow before, right? It goes all the way back in Genesis, in Genesis 9, when God set it up as a reminder, as a, as a, 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 uh, a sign of his covenant of what? Do you remember? That he will be faithful not to destroy the earth as he did in the flood. The flood will not happen in, the, in, its, in, in, in what it is in, in Genesis. And the rainbow was set as a reminder for that. It's a reminder of the faithfulness of God and that he will be faithful and true uh, to his covenant. So God is in control. God is in charge. He is seated on the throne. That's the first message uh, of what John saw in the throne. But that's not all. Remember, uh, we took a tour on the Oval Office. Let's take a look. What's around the throne of God? We saw what's on the throne. How about what's around the throne? There's more. In verse 3, we move to what is the surrounding of the throne. We're told that around the throne, there were 24 other thrones. And on those thrones, there were 24 elders. They're all in white, and they had crowns of gold upon their head. Now, that's a, a hard one. You know, who are these? The first thing that comes to mind is, oh, God has company. He has 24 other people that is seated around him. Now, many times you would think that they are advisors. They are those that do his bidding. Yes, that's the case. In fact, uh, if you, but the, the, there's the, the, the debate, who are these 24? Well, if you go back to the Old Testament, as we will do quite a bit in the book of Revelation. It's hard to, un it's impossible to understand Revelation if you don't know the Old Testament. We encountered 24, that number 24, in the Old Testament. You see, when David was setting up the worship in the temple, there were 24 uh, uh, specific priests or Levites that were in charge of worship. So that number 24 is not unusual. The 24 stands for those that are, are assigned to lead in the worship of the temple. That could be it. And what was set in the temple is a reflection of what it is in the throne room of God. And that there were 24 worship leaders, so to speak, that were there to lead whole of creation in worship. That's one theory on what, who these 24 elders are. But... Other scholars suggested that those 24 elders most likely or could represent God's people in its entirety. Remember in the Old Testament, the 12 tribes of Israel? And then the New Testament, you have what? The 12 apostles representing the New Testament believers. 12 and 12, 24. Hmm. Now, I, I kind of feel that, that that's also a good uh, idea of who these 24 are. They represent all believers in the Old and the New Testament before God, worshiping and ready to do God's bidding uh, on the throne. Now, some people goes on to say, oh, it could be the, 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 the 24, could be the 12 uh, uh, 
you know, uh, tw uh, sons of, of Jacob, and it could be the 12 apostles there. I, I don't think I would go that far, you know, that they're exactly those individuals there, but they represent God's people. I believe that that's the case. And they are clothed in white, as Jesus described, those who will be faithful, they will be clothed in white, and they will have crowns on their head declaring the praises of God. So the members of the heavenly entourage, you know, are given. Uh, they, were, they are given robes of white and crowns of gold as a reward for their faithfulness. I believe what we see in, in those elders are, are the faithful works of God in the midst of His people. Those who follow Him, they will receive the just reward that God said that they would. They would. God is in control. God is faithful to those who follow Him. So you have on the throne, around the throne, from the throne, something else, something remarkable what we see. In verse 5, we're told that from the throne comes flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder. I think if you study that, that should remind you of, of when God revealed himself to the people of Israel in Mount Sinai. Those are the exact words that when God uh, made his presence known, it was not like, uh, you know, uh, just a musical entourage, here's God, you know, it's not like that. You know, like, oh, I'm ready for entertainment. No, it will strike fear, will strike awe, will strike you know, you'll feel so small. It will be rumblings. It will be lightning. You know, in many ways, uh, I kind of feel with, with concert nowadays, they, they try to imitate that. They want to be flashy. They want to be loud. And, 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 but it will be, I believe, to the point, not to, to cause us to great, be excited, but to cause us to feel at awe, you know, of the presence, the very presence of God. And that's exactly the case here. And, and not just so that we may be, uh, you know, would call us into attention, but remember, the, the thunder and the lightning depict the power of God. You know, I, since coming to California, uh, returning back to the U.S., we haven't had the thunderstorms that we experience in Southeast Asia. You know how in Asia, it, it just, there's loud thunder, you know, really cracking of the thunder and the lightning, just a... Uh, it just strikes fear in your heart. You won't, you won't feel the same way after you hear and see that. You'll be, oh, you want to hide because, you know, it's just awesome. And, and it shows the power that is out there and you know you are weak. And that's exactly what you see. In the throne of God, you see this manifestation of who God is and how small. You are not God is the message. God is God. And when you come before his presence, you are on your knee. You cannot be standing. And, and that's exactly what we see. And we're told that in front of the throne, in the midst, in the midst of this, this visual and this sound, we see the seven lamps blazing representing the spirits of God. It represents the Holy Spirit of God. You know, it, it reminds me of Zechariah 4, 6, where God told his servant Zechariah, it's not by might. Nor, not by human might, not by human power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, that his will will be done. None of us is that powerful. Only God is powerful. And, um, and that's the reminder of what we see in the throne. And lastly, in front, there's a sea of glass that is clear as crystal. I believe what that is, it's a, it's a separation between created things and the throne of God. It's like a moat, so to speak. The idea of distance between God and everything else. God is God and we are not. I've shared this before with you that each morning, part of my prayer is, is that statement. Lord, would you remind me that you are God and I am not. The danger, the problem with us at each day is we think we are God. In fact, the very posture of prayer sometimes is, for many of us, myself included, God, 
All right, we have a new day. God, I want this, I want that. Could you make sure that happened? You know, who's God, by the way? You know, you know we, we call the shots. We're the one that wants things done our way. Really? That makes you, that makes me God. I think when we come before God, we say, Lord, it's you. What's your pleasure, God? What do you want to be done? What is your will? I am ready to do it. And then, by the way, Lord, here are some of my thoughts. It's kind of like an, a footnote more than anything else. It begins with your will be done, Lord, in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. So, Lord, would you remind me? Would you allow me, as John here, to have a vision of who you are? And in knowing who you are, I know who I am. And I know my proper place in the whole scheme of life. Now, some of us may feel like, really? Isn't that kind of, oh, man, you know, uh, isn't that, uh, we want, you know, what we, you know, wouldn't that be a, 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 a discouragement from people? I think if God is clear to us and we know our pl proper place, that, that's peace. There's strength. There's joy. There's hope because we are right where we really are. It will be not sad. It will not be discouragement. It will be joy if, if that's the case. Can you imagine? You're, we see a throne. Guess what? You're not on it. And better not aspire to be on that throne. That's what we want. That's what the world tells us. We see a throne. Guess what? I'm going to sit on it. And I'm going to call the shot. That's scary. That is scary. Better, we see a throne. God is there. And he is fantastic. And he is calling the shot. And whatever he calls, it's going to be good. It's going to be for the best. Whew. Thanks be to God. I think that's what John is telling us right here. You know, I love this story of how Don Moen, I'm sure many of us will come back to that, we love the song, God Will Make a Way. Uh, I, I don't know if the young people still have that, but I know I remember when it first came out. Tears were in my eyes as I sing that. In fact, even today, every time I hear it, I just, I'm just so blessed by it. Do you know how that song came about? You know, God Will Make a Way, that, that song. It was not Don Moen somewhere in a beach in Hawaii. You know, I like to write a song. And then, oh, this is so good, write it out, and then we love it. No, no. Actually, that song, if you don't know where that song started, it came when he received a phone call from a dear friend telling him that this friend's family was involved in a car accident. The wife and the children all perished in that car accident. In that moment of grief, he decided he wants to fly to be with that friend. And as he took that flight, you know, to... To, to go see this friend, to comfort his friend, grieving as he is along with, uh, with, with the family. You know, he wondered, what, what can I say to this friend when I get there? And at 35,000 feet on the plane, as they were flying there, he looked out the window. And suddenly at that moment, the words of this song and the music of this song came to his mind, into his heart, in its entirety. He started singing, I think, for those who are musicians, you know how it is. That moment of inspiration, the moment when thought and, and, and music come together, that's how this song, God will, as he was thinking, what should I tell this friend of mine who encountered this terrible, very difficult experience? What do I, what do I say to them? God will make a way where there seem to be no way. He worked in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me close through by his side. In words and ways we cannot see, he will make a way for me. That song came at that moment. and That was the word that he will share with that friend. That God knows. God understands. God is there. God is in control. He will make a way. What's your reaction when you come face to face with God? That's the message for us. God 
will make. God is in control. I hope you are encouraged. As John leads us on this tour of heaven. But there's other things that we see in the throne of God. One last thing is we're told that around the throne, there were four living creatures Incredible. I mean, the description of it blows your mind. In fact, if you were to Google out these four living creatures, you see all attempts by man in all time trying to picture what they look like. It's rather grotesque, if I could use that word. You know, a wing, six wings with eyes all over. Whew, that's kind of freaky, isn't it? And these are creatures that have faces of lions, of, of, of ox, of, of, of eagle. It's just bizarre. What are they? We don't know. <laughs> I think when we get to heaven, we'll, 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 we'll get an explanation of this. But one thing for sure is, uh, well, first we encounter them, again, in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel also had the same vision, and he also saw these four living creatures, and they also are described in the same way. These four living creatures, the best that we can date is these are, the, these are cherubims. These are angels uh, that God created that will serve him in his throne room and do his bidding. You know, there are two major types of angels. There is the cherubim and the seraphim. The seraphim, uh, it seems like they are there to uh, carry out God's works of mercy, you know, extending help, extending, um, uh, you know, God's uh, protection. We notice that the cherubims are God's instrument of judgment. You know, when God wants something, you know, to be done that are, uh, that's judgment, that, that's for judgment, is the cherubim. Seraphim will be for mercy, cherubim is for judgment. Hmm, that kind of tells you a little bit what to see later on in the book of Revelation. But these four angels, they're kind of like the, you know, in Chinese movie, you have big, you know, major bodyguards of the emperor. And they're ready to do. When the emperor says, go, they, they're there. They're, they're powerful, capable of carrying out the bidding of the, the master. I believe that's what these cherubims are. They are there, and they remind us again of the power of God to do his will. And the thing that, that fascinates, one last observation, and it will go to the re remaining part of, of chapter 4. They got eyes all over their wings, back and forth. What about those eyes? Well, you know, eyes are, are it, it reminds us of, of an all-seeing ability. They can see uh, many things that we are not able to. They have perception. They have ability to see. They have wings, ability to, to fly. I think when God said, go do it, you can say, well, they may not make it. Or maybe they don't know enough. Huh, they got wings. Six of them, and they got eyes all over. You think they can't do the job? You know, they can. Again, it shows the nature and the ability that God has placed in this angel to do his will. The message is God is powerful, God is faithful. That's what we see in the throne of God. When you go to the throne of God, what should you do? Or what will you be doing? I'll close with this. You will worship. You know, some of us, uh, when I went to the Reagan uh, Presidential Library, oh, it's fascinating. I learned a lot. But I didn't bow down like, oh, let me worship Reagan. Oh, let me uh, kind of, I mean, I admired him greatly. He was a, one of our greatest presidents, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, he's human, but he is, but I don't bow and worship. What if you get a tour? What are you drawn before God? What if you come before God like what we do? What is the proper response? We will be on our knees and we'll be in worship. That's what we see here in chapter 4. Follow along with me, verse 8. The, the each of the four living creatures, remember, I believe these are angels, having six wings and eyes covered all over. Day and night, what are they doing? They never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You know, for those of us who read Isaiah, we heard this before. We've seen this, so to speak, before. That's what's going on in heaven, a nonstop worship of God. And they are calling out, they are reminding us 
of the whole. They, they're praising God. Remember, they have eyes. They've seen what God can do. They have wings. They're able to go to the farthest reaches of what God had done, and they came back and say, yep, <laughs> we need to worship God, guys. Maybe you don't feel that way. You don't see that way. You don't understand. Let me just uh, headline, you know, worship God. That's the right thing to do. And I think that, that's, that's the invitation for us as we draw near to God. What keeps us from praising God? Maybe some of us, we wonder, you know, what has God been doing? Is He worthy of our worship, of our praise? We don't see God as much, quote-unquote. Maybe you could take it from the angels who have seen it all, who know it, and who've seen past, present, and future, uh, not about future, but at least they've seen it. I feel that Many times we, we, we say, oh, I, I, I still yet to learn more about God so that I can praise Him as, as I ought to. Take it from the angels uh, who, who when, they, when they, when, that's what they do. They worship God. And what is it that they worship in God? They call out the holiness of God. You know, there's only one attribute of God that is repeated three times. You don't hear in the Bible, God is uh, just, just, just. You don't hear the Bible saying that God is love, love, love. As wonderful as those are, those are good attributes. But one thing we should not forget, God is holy, holy, holy. That is a unique Hebrew. It's, it's comparable to our grammar of what is called a superlative degree. You know what a superlative? It's, it's in English, we said the best. You know how you have good, better, best. The, the superlative, the highest degree. God's holiness is not good. It's a good holy. It's not better holy. It's the best. It's the highest form of holiness. It's holy, holy, holy. Do you see that way? Do you acknowledge His holiness? That's what we hear in heaven time and time again. And then when the angels were praising, what happens after that? The remaining part tells us the, 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 the result of that praise. Look at verse 9 and 10. When the living creatures was giving glory, honor, and thanks to the one who sits on the throne, guess what the 24 elders, remember, the elders, they represent all believers in the Old and the New Testament. Do they just, woo, good job, angel, boy, choir, thank you so much for that rendition. We have, <laughs> that's, that's us, that's our typical way of response, isn't it? You know, when we are entertained, we applaud. But that, they're not being entertained. They're being invited to join in. And what, is the, what did the 24 elders do? Two things. They worship on their knees and they cast their crowns before God. What happens when we are invited to worship? When we hear worship, we want to worship along. And how do we do that? Well, we the, the 24 elders said, you are worthy, our God, our, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, and power, for you have created all things, and all things were created and have their being. They, they, they respond back, but not just to call out. They took their crowns, and the crowns in the, in the book of Revelation is a reward of their faithfulness. They cast it on the crown. I don't deserve this crown. It's, it belongs to you, God. All that I have, all that I am is because of you. This is yours. When we come to worship, we come to a realization, it's not about us. It's about the Lord. Here, Lord. And the invitation is this. Whenever we come together, is that what we plan to do? When we hear someone share God's goodness and testimony, do we respond the way, yeah, I agree. That's my, the same experience for me. God is so good. God is, you know, it's not, uh, I'm undeserving. I give God all the glory. If I could get more crowns so that I can give it to Jesus, I would do that. That's exactly, you know, I always wonder, why didn't God take us to heaven yet? Well, God wants to do wonderful things in our life so that we, when we come before Him, we have much to testify concerning His goodness and His grace. Every day when you wake up, what is it? It's about what we want to do or what we want to do so that God will be glorified even more. If there's something to be learned in the book of Revelation, it's our time spent here. 
is we want to accumulate, we want to do, do God's will so that we may, when we come to Him face to face, we may, we may want to say, God, it's all you. And here it is, Lord. Here's a testimony that you have done great things in my life. The four living creatures and all the elders shows us three things. Let me close with this. When we come before God, we are so humbled by the presence of the holy and sovereign God. We need to hear that every day. You can do that when you open God's word. You are, when you study God's word, you cannot but be so humbled by who God, uh, who, who God is in our life. Secondly, when you know God, you cannot but want to worship Him. You want to acknowledge Him. You want to say, God, these, all of this thing is true. You know, I know it and I experience it. I worship you. And then, together with others, we want to um, give all the glory to Him, confess Him as our Savior and Lord. We want what is going on in heaven to be done here on earth. My prayer for each one of us as we enter into this week, that that's exactly what we want, what we want to do. And, the, and that's the purpose of our life until we see our Lord face to face. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, help us to get a glimpse of glory. Many of us are tantalized by this world, by what this world has to offer that we forget heaven, and even worse, we don't long for heaven that is to be with you, because why, why should we? We're having so much fun. We're having so much good things, quote unquote, here on earth. And then when we are disappointed, we are devastated. I pray, O oh God, that we will see and we may capture greater things before you, O oh God. Most of important it is you and when we see you the things of this world they're nothing and it is you that we long for it is you we want to live for it is so that we may cast our crowns at your feet the more crowns we can get in this life that's what this life is all about because it's all about you lord may that be oh god whether you call us home this week or when we see you face to face at your coming, that we have much crowns to glorify you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to stand. And let's come before the Lord who is on his throne, who is praised by all heaven and earth, who is holy, holy, holy. Let's join in the song. A thousand generations Falling down in worship To sing the song of ages To the Lamb And all who gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high. Sing 
the song forever to the land. If you walk in freedom, and if you bear his name, sing the song forever to the land. Oh, we'll sing the song forever and amen. And the angels cry. creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing, holy, to the King of kings. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, Oh, creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever, hear your people sing, holy, to the King of kings. So what he had done in our life, he forgave us of our sins. And we are reminded of that, that it was through the cross that we are made holy. And we cannot be what Christ wants us to be by our own self. We need his continued work in our lives. I invite you to join me to remind myself of the great sacrifice on the cross and how I need the Lord Jesus, how we need our Lord Jesus every day of our life. We do so by partaking of the bread and the cup. If you have Jesus in your life, if you have confessed him as your savior and you want him to be, continue to be your Lord every moment, every day of your life, let's do so by partaking the bread and cup. If you have not done so yet, if you have not accepted the Lord, it's okay, we are glad you can observe it with us. Or if your decision is, I want to be the Lord of my life, Please let the bread and cup pass because taking the bread and cup represents that. You want him, you thank him for being your savior and you want him to be your Lord. If that is your desire, partake the bread and cup with us. Let me ask our deacons to please come forward as we pass out the bread and cup. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you that we can join all heaven declaring holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We do so because the blood of Jesus have cleansed us from our sins. Our desire is to be like our Lord Jesus so that we may continue to praise you, O oh God. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for the cross. 
We pray for those who have yet to know Jesus, that they would come to faith in Him so that they would join us in worship of you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Would you stand with us? On the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. Let us remember our Lord together. After supper, the Lord took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us remember our Lord with thanksgiving. I'd like to invite all of us to pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. May it be our desire, longing from this day forth. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And now we'll have a time of prayer for the offering. Uh, this time is not to prepare for the offering, but prepare our hearts um, as we give. So please bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we, we, we give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. Uh, we had an opportunity today to just uh, 
get a glimpse of um, an idea of what would it be like to be in your presence, Lord. And, and Lord, even that I'm sure this will pale in comparison to what we will experience, Lord. And uh, we have the opportunity to be able to, to lead others um, to, uh, to, you, to, your, to your kingdom. And uh, part of this, is, Lord, is through giving and uh, into your ministry. Uh, we pray, Lord, that as we give, our hearts are humbled and, and uh, just with full of gratitude, Lord, for just what you've done for us and um, that we will have the opportunity to be able to uh, further your kingdom. Uh, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, welcome everyone here this morning. It's great to see everyone. Uh, I don't have any cards for newcomers, so perhaps we don't have anyone new. But what I would encourage you to do is just take a look around. If you don't recognize the person sitting around you, you know, perhaps afterwards get a moment to, to meet them and uh, introduce yourself. Uh, move on for a time of announcements. So uh, VVS registration is now open. Uh, so if you have children that may be eligible for this, uh, or you may know people, I highly encourage you to share the news. Uh, and the other thing is also they're looking for volunteers to, to serve in this ministry as well. Uh, the, week, the, the week is gonna be from August 5th through the 9th, and they have the times there. And it'll be right here at the main campus. Uh, one of the new uh, announcements for this, for this week is gonna be a prayer revival conference. Uh, so that is the theme is for prayer revival. Uh, that is going to be over the weekend of May 31st, so not Memorial Day weekend, but the following, and that's going to be uh, in Building 1. That's a $10 fee, a registration fee, if it's registered before April 30th. Uh, there will be a special prayer walk uh, that will be taking place on April 13th, uh, so that's coming, yeah, that's coming up. So that's going to be, I believe, next Saturday. Uh, at 10 a.m. at Poway Community Park. If you have interest uh, to, to support, the, or just to support, maybe not even to walk, uh, there's a link in your bulletin to be able to do so. Uh, Christian formation classes are continuing again today, uh, so please refer to, uh, I guess, yeah, the bulletin and, on the, and what's displayed above for the lesson plans. And this is also coming up soon, the Seder dinner. Uh, so if, I believe there's still seats open, so if you have the opportunity, sign up. I think it's a great opportunity just to be able to learn about this and, uh, yeah, and have a good meal. Uh, there will be no pickleball today just due to a tournament happening at the location. And uh, for the New Testament, so if you're reading uh, and have completed by next week up to 13 weeks or 50 chapters of the New Testament, uh, you'll get a special prize, so yeah, so it's exciting. And uh, you can refer to the bulletin for all the announcements and full details. Uh, at the end of the service, please uh, dispose of your used communion cups just in the, in the trash. Let's stand one more time for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you. The Lord give you peace both now and until we see him face to face. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a good week.